Welcome back to another episode of What's the Word? And here we are in, I was in my brain, I'm going round two of three. Yeah, yeah. On a topic uh, that's fun, Dallas, don't you think? Dude, you have no idea how excited I am about about these episodes. I, I have mean, a little like, of an idea. Oh my goodness. Because <laughs> I've seen your notes. My notes I've are seen insane. Your documents. Yeah. Yeah. We're round two of three of talking about baptism. So last time we got to talk about uh, why. Why get baptized in the first place? Summary. Right. Jesus tells us to. Right. Summary. Uh, the early church, that's what we see happen. People mm-hmm. come to faith and the first thing when they're convicted, uh, they get baptized. They get baptized. Crazy thing. So it's an important thing uh, to be done because mm-hmm. Jesus tells us to do it as his church. Great commission, great command that he gives to us. This episode, part two, the question is symbol or sacrament? Yep. Which I can recognize that's a fancy word for some of our listeners. We're going to break the, the, the second word, that sacrament yep. word down. in a little bit. Before we get going too far. But essentially what we're saying, friends, is... Uh, is it just representative? Is it just a nice gesture? Mm-hmm. Uh, or does the word tell us that there's something deeper and more meaningful happening? Right. Yeah. 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 Which, as you can kind of tell by the tone of my voice, you probably know where I land. Um, I don't think it's going to be a secret as to where I land. Yeah. Uh, after we get about 35 seconds into this episode, people are going to be like, ooh, we had a nerve with her. You did. Yeah. You did. You did. So, and we're going to, we're going to, and that's the funny thing about these topics, right? Mm-hmm. We're going to recognize, right? Christ calls us to be his, uh, just salt, but also light and to do it with grace and gentleness and truth. And so that's going to be the hard thing for us is to let the spirit restrain us and restrain past conversations because we are so excited for those that are listening to this podcast who've never heard this stuff before. Right. This is exciting. Never wrestled with mm-hmm. it before. And we're just genuinely going to look like or look at plenty of passages um, that, to, to really get to the heart of what does God teach us about baptism? About baptism. Yeah. Yep. But before we do that. Yes, exactly. Before we do that, uh, I'm going to pop us over to Psalm uh, 19, 14. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. 100%. So when I went back to school, mm-hmm. uh a few years ago, so meaning I was about 110 when I went back to school. (laughs) And uh, this verse would have been incredibly useful. Sure, every class period? Almost every class period, but especially (laughs) the class periods where we were talking about baptism. So I, I, you know, I gotta gotta have an apology that's been about a decade in the making to all of my former classmates. I am so sorry that I was so vocal. I'm not sorry I was vocal. I'm sorry in the way that I voiced sure. my opinion. Uh, it was very forceful. And as you very say forceful. that, though, I, I grew up in the middle of Georgia, mm-hmm. um, but even as I did ministry in different parts of the country, so I'm even thinking of a very vivid memory I had of serving in Wisconsin and a pastor's breakfast, Dallas, that we hosted and just having someone that got down. And for whatever reason, the Christian church has made the topic of baptism a battleground. It has been. It's very divisive. And that's why you feel like you're walking into a, and you feel like you have to walk on eggshells. You have to be ready for a fight, which is why I'm like, I've gotten to the point. I really, I really do feel this way. I've gotten to the point that, uh, this, the word, Mm -hmm. the Bible Mm -hmm. describes the word of God as a sword. Oh yeah. And I'm saying like, if this is a battle, that this is the only weapon I need. What does God's word actually say about the topic? Convince me it says something different. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, and we'll talk, you know, we'll have a good conversation. But as Christians, that's a helpful, that's a sharpening conversation that we're having, not a stab each other and no, it's not, each other it, it's conversation. A, right. As as iron sharpens iron. Yes. We need to that that's how we need to approach this. And I know that uh, we've got the potential um to maybe step on some toes with some of the things that we say. Um, but I would I would caution y'all to um check it for yourself. Look and read and see what the Bible actually says about yeah. this. This is not this is not Dallas Lewis speaking. This is not Pastor Lee speaking. This is we're we're going straight off of what and yeah. I'm and I'm going to say it's not even what Luther says. Yeah. There and you go. It, it, Dallas Lewis said that. I, I did say that and now I feel really bad. Uh, but no, <laughs> this is this is all about what God says about this. Yeah. Well, and I and I'll admit, right? I mean, someone intentionally we have named this episode and the next episode yep. a very intentional way to draw someone to the conversation. But it truly is for the first time. Like it's the Ethiopian eunuch who's hearing for this for the first time. Who, for whatever reason, after he hears the fullness of what Jesus did, what God has done throughout mm-hmm. history, says, "There's some water. I want to get baptized." I want to get this baptized. Is, this is who this conversation is. That's for. That's exactly and it. And so I'm so glad we get to do it. So last time we got to talk about 
Matthew 28, very important passage when it comes to uh, why we do baptism mm-hmm. in the first place. Got to look at other places. Uh, Peter, Paul, certainly Acts 8. We, we talked about places where we saw people just get baptized. So this is just the, this is the pattern that we are following. Jesus mm-hmm. followers have done this for a long time because Jesus told us to do it. Because Jesus said so. Now, we're going to go to one of those Jesus followers in the letter that he has mm-hmm. to really have this conversation. Because again, the conversation is, is this a symbol? Is this just representative of the good grace that God has for us? Or, or a sacrament, which means before we even dive into what Peter says, because yeah. that's who I was alluding to, we got to talk about the word sacrament, which is a fancy word. That's a fancy word. And so, I mean, we are high church, considered high church. So we're very traditional. And sure. even though we do have a contemporary traditional service, being, rituals, uh, ritual, and, and we stick to decorations. the... the the way that the, the the new church was in, you know, we we're talking like the 200, 300s, um, I a mean, couple hundred years after Jesus the ascended. Patterns the patterns that of, we do. And, and ooh, this is this is fun to try and explain. Right. To a so ornamental. Okay. And uh, our pastors wear robes. Um, but even the services, right? Even the even services. The word like liturgy. Liturgy. Which is a fancy word. And someone recently defancified that for me and I don't have the word on the tip the of my The order tongue. of service. Yeah, I mean, the, it's the, just the way the, that we do things. Yeah. Uh, the the calendar that we follow. Sacrament is one of those that if, if you've not been in, I want to say like a Lutheran church or some of our Catholic churches, uh, that's going to yeah. be a word that, that might be a little foreign to you because it's not something that we throw around yeah. on a Tuesday. Episcopal, Presbyterian, Methodist, mm-hmm. like they will all somewhat use the word sacrament. Right. And, and sacrament is a fancy word. You can hear the word sacred in it. Exactly. And it just, the word sacred means holy, mm-hmm. right? And even the word holy is a fancy word. It means set apart, right? Right. Mm-hmm. So a, a sacrament is a holy act. Right. Uh, and so when, when and, and this is where it's an interesting conversation, right? Our Roman Catholic brothers and sisters would recognize seven sacraments and mm-hmm. they have their own rules, like they what do. constitutes a sacrament and they get to check all those boxes for us, which we, I mean, it's not, it's, it's because when we look at the Bible, we see two really significant holy acts and we say, what do they have in common? That's why we have a checklist. Yeah. Now this checklist is not in scripture. It's just that when we look at scripture and see the holy acts that God still does, that's what we would say. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can obviously see where we land, uh, the, that Jesus has to tell us to do it. Yep. Check did that in Matthew 28 for baptism. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll, I'll jump to the third cause it's a, 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 the third, the second one is the harder one to, to, okay. to, to wrap our mind around. Okay. The, the, so the, the third rule is that it has to give forgiveness. There has mm-hmm. to be a promise that grace and forgiveness are actually being distributed. Oh, and I love this Dallas. I just had a uh, confirmation church recently. And it was, uh, and I, I, I told the parents, but I forgot to tell the, st- the students, which is good because the parents get to go and talk to the students. But I was like, we talked about the sacrament of the altar. We talked about communion, which we'll communion. get into that in a few episodes yeah. here. Um, but I said, look, look, when we talk about grace and forgiveness being handed over, because a, a big conversation that we could have today even is, well, isn't God's grace enough? Isn't the cross enough? I said, yes, absolutely. But here's the crazy thing is that Jesus, right? Mm-hmm. He tells us, and we'll see today and for baptism, that he wants his grace and his forgiveness continually distributed. I said, uh, it's kind of like a last will and testament. Mm-hmm. We talked about that last week. We did. Or right? on the oh, last good, episode. We good. did. Maybe we that did. was why it's so fresh in my mind and I said it at a confirmation church. Yeah, no, we talked about it last but week. But it's good, good to bring it back, mm-hmm. right? Because uh, every time, right, in baptism, it's it's God saying, okay, because of the cross, this faith, this faith, this gift, this forgiveness, this grace is being distributed now. In baptism. In baptism. Right. And we'll talk it's about the passages. It's a means of grace. It's a something yes. tan- something tangible that you can hold on to. Good. And, and even I, means is fancy. Even a, a, a way. A way. Of the way that God delivers a way. grace. A way yeah. that, yeah, the way that God delivers grace. Something for us who happen to be slow learners. Yes. And we need to be able to touch. Which goes uh, to the our, number two. Yes. Right requirement for a sacrament. Is that you have, it, it's got to be... Uh, we call it, the fancy way to say it is a visible element. Visible element, Another tangible. Way, it's something tangible. Something, something you, you can, can touch. touch. Right, we're, we're, so, so it's really clear. One, Jesus told us to do it. Two, it's really clear that God is working because something as powerful as grace and forgiveness are given mm-hmm. through means. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the means just happen to be Interesting and, and physical and physical. Yeah. So that we have, we can wrap our mind around that. I, I don't do theory very well. Um, and so it's very, this is very reassuring for me because I can touch it Yeah. and I can experience it. So that's where we are right now. Where is, is baptism going to be a, a symbol? So it's just something that is, that reminds you of, of this. And it's a, a like a placeholder kind of almost that it, it, um, or 
Or even like the word remembrance, mm-hmm. right, is really important for those that have a symbolic approach. So it's it's more of a, a representation, a remembrance of the grace that you have in Jesus. But it really is like like there. We'll get into this, like because because my question for that perspective is, so why do it at all? Why do it at all? You know, do you even have to do it? Mm-hmm. Why is it a celebration? I, I guess I'm always celebrating the, the resurrection. I'm always celebrating Jesus' death and resurrection because that is what has saved me, yep. right? But there's this really cool, for me, when I look at the word, tangible peace, that God does incredible things. He combines his word to means and does incredible things. Right. Yeah. So it's really, 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 really interesting. All right. So as we keep, as we do this then, wh- what do you mean, Lee, that, uh, that, that forgiveness is given in baptism? Where yeah. do you get that? I get it from God's word. Right. Right. And the place, the place that we go to is Peter. Peter, right. of all people who Peter. walked alongside of Jesus, yep. who knew he was doing, who led the church, right, in the early days, right? Peter in his letter to the church says, for Christ also suffered for sins what once chapter and for are you in? all. I'm in First Peter chapter three. Good job. Mm-hmm. First Peter chapter three, looking at verses 18 through 22. I want to back up just because the way I start it does, I don't even like it. All right, so let's go to 13. Who will then harm you if you're devoted to what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness, you're blessed. Do not fear what they fear or be intimidated. But in your hearts, uh, regard Christ the Lord as holy, ready at any time to give a defense to anyone who asks for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience, so that when you are accused, those who disparage your good conduct in Christ will be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good than it should uh, be for uh, God's will. Uh, If that should be for God's will, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered, right? So there's the connection. You're going to suffer because you're listening to Jesus. Good. All right. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, Jesus being the righteous. Us for the being unrighteous. the unrighteous. Yep. That he might bring you to God. He, I love talking about the grammar of the gospel, Dallas. Mm-hmm. I love it. Mm-hmm. Notice who's the subject. Notice who's the object, right? right? Who is the one doing something and who is someone who's having something done to them, right? That we just got it. So that he, Jesus, might bring you object to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the spirit in which he also went and made proclamation to the spirits in prison who in the past were disobedient when God patiently waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared. In it, the ark, a few, that is eight people, were saved through water. Verse 21, baptism, which corresponds to this, Mm -hmm. now saves you, not as the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a good conscience toward God through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and power subject to him. Baptism the, the end. now saves you. Baptism right? now saves you. And that partnered with the flood, right? That's mm-hmm. a really important part. Another place where God is speaking, God is doing things, God is directing things. That seemed strange. Seems very it, strange. It seemed strange at the time. I mean, you think about Noah, it had never rained. And here God is saying, build a build a boat, sure. a, a really big boat. And and now the church, the apostles, Paul and, and Peter and and all of all of the boys, um, they're issuing in this this new command that that Jesus, God, has given them, and it sounds strange to people. Yeah, but it, but it's a moment, right? That they're mm-hmm. calling back to where water is involved, and yep. water is yes, destroying, which will be important when we talk about what are we being saved from, what does right? it all mean, right? But it's also saving. It's saving, right? So water, God's God is directing things with water and saving people, and in the very next next breath, right, baptism, which corresponds to this now saves you, mm-hmm. not as the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a good conscience toward God through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And to me, I read that as not as a symbolic thing no, this making is, you clean. This is a thing. Yeah. But, this is but, a thing. But he's actually making you clean, which Dallas brings us to the question, hmm. saves you from what? Mm-hmm. And this is key, right? This is really key for anybody that's unbaptized or again, uh, again, we're we're laying our hand out there. We 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 believe there's something bigger going on than just a representation, bigger than symbolic. And, and but this is part of it. Is we got to ask the question, Dallas? Why do we need saving in the first place? Because we're sinful. Like we have fallen short of the glory of God. We can't be around. We can't be in the presence of God. We can't talk to God because our human nature is diseased and and unclean. And I'm gonna pop quiz you a little bit, but no, dude. But in a in a way that I think you'll appreciate, because how do we know 
that because of sin, we can't stand in the presence of God. I'm thinking in terms of Old Testament examples that show us why we know that sin can't stand in the presence of God. Anything come to mind for that? Well, the Psalms come to mind for that. Um, the Exodus comes to mind, the Ten Commandments. Good. Uh, Exodus, Ten Commandments, Moses was a guy mm-hmm. I was thinking of, yeah. right? Moses comes down the mountain and there's something changed about him. There is, but even if you back and up. on the mountain. If you, if you back up to when Moses got his calling, oh, there was, good. Something, too, there was something very different. So Moses is, God calls to Moses from a burning bush and he tells him, before you come any closer, take off your shoes yeah. because you're standing on holy ground. And so, Moses freaks out. And uh, Well, I would have freaked out too. Yeah. I mean, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so now go ahead when, and then, you know, he, he the Israelites escape. Egypt and captivity and Moses goes up to the mountain and he has this conversation with God. The cleft in the rock is yep. what I'm thinking of, right? Yep. So so Moses is on top of the mountain and God is like, turn your face away from me because you can't see my You can't face. see me. And then when he comes down, it's clear that he has been in his presence, mm-hmm. not in the fullness, right? Because it's this idea that if you were, then you would die because sin can't have a part of what is perfect. Right. Right. I go to... Um, Isaiah, the call of Isaiah. Oh yeah, and the the hot coal, the hot right? coals, this, and I'm a sinful man. I'm a and, sinful man, and I oh, and the angel, the seraphim, mm-hmm. takes a coal from the altar of God and touches Isaiah's lips to purify him. Right? Yeah, I know, not an illustration we love, but it's because of the God's people knew. The God's people of the Old Testament and God's people in the New Testament. They know of, uh, the calling of the disciples, mm-hmm. and and it's Peter, mm-hmm. right? Who like. Like when he recognizes who Jesus is, he's like, I, I can't have, you can't have any part of me. I'm a sinful person. Now he might not have the fullness of God piece in there yet, but there's this whole, I am sinful. I can't have a part with. With something God, that is not. Right, with this perfect. Mm-hmm. All right, so so it's just that there, there can't be, and this is where the spotless lamb comes in. This is, this, it's all over scripture, guys, that that God is perfect. And we are not, he, and we needed a savior. His fullness can't, interact with sin. Right. Right. Fullness. That's the key word. Because it's very Fullness. clear that God works with sinners. Yes. God works through sinners. Yes, he does. God works in his creation. Mm-hmm. But because of that fall, right, because of, of sin entering into this world, God's presence in this world has not been the same since. It has not. And and we need a, a means of grace to restore that right relationship. And and that is what we that's what we're going to get into today. And that's yeah. what we're going to see yeah. is this restoration. We we've seen that uh, on the cross. We've seen that on the cross. Um, and now this is a um, continuation, addendum, that's not the right word, um, that it's another command. It's a, it's a command that Jesus has given us. To go and baptize. To go and baptize. Yeah. Yes. Well, and so, and so, but this original sin piece, Dallas, I want to I wanna land on that, right? Okay. We are sinful. Yeah. Right. From birth, we are sinful. All right. And we see this, especially when Paul, Paul, big leader of the church early on, uh, Mm -hmm. uh, Romans, I'm going to mix them around. Romans 3.23 and Romans 6.23 are both very, very important for us. I'm already in Romans 6.23, so you can go to three. Okay. Romans 3.23 is for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Yeah. Okay. Uh, All. All All. means all. All means all. We've had that conversation before. Mm -hmm. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, which means no one, everyone is in need of a savior. Right. Right. Not one of us is perfect. And then Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death. Yes. But the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ, in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Good. So we have this sin problem too, that's going to lead to death, right? Mm -hmm. The reason why we have death in this world, if you've never heard this before, is because of our sin. Mm -hmm. And so I think this is important for us because, because we have to recognize that sin is a condition. Yes. Sin is a sin is a condition that we were born with. Mm-hmm. We're not Jesus, Mm-mm. right? So when we we had Adam and Eve were two sinful parents, and every single child that has been born since then has this spiritual DNA of sin. It is a condition that we are born into, right? Which we'll get to talk a little bit more about that in in the next episode. Um, but this is why we would even talk about why we need a savior, right? Because we need saving from our sins, Mm -hmm. right? And there's a lot of proclamations of the church, uh, like Hosanna, Lord save us. We certainly said that that this past week of Palm Sunday a lot, uh, as we remember that. That's what we need. We need saving. And God's people knew this all the way through the New Testament. I think it's recently, Dallas, that we start pretending somehow that's not true. 
Well, yeah, because we've elevated man. We we keep decreasing. Yes. We keep decreasing God, and we keep decreasing the need for God um, because we keep elevating ourselves. That's y'all. That's a sin problem. Yeah. That that's a pride. That's an arrogant problem. We we've talked about this too. Uh, when you know, why do I need forgiveness? Well, you know, or how how can God forgive me? Um, because what I've done is so big and so sure. great. Okay, well, that is elevating myself, even even the negative parts of me, uh, where it, it, it almost sounds like you're being humble, um, but you're, you're not. And, and it's the, the arrogance associated with we're, we're bringing man up and we're, we're bringing God down. Good. And that, and, and that connects to what I want to talk about next, but so interesting as you were going Dallas, I was going, you know, who I struggle the most talking with that about Christians. People outside the church, for the most part, once you explain to them that, that God can have nothing to do with sin, mm-hmm. they're like, oh, gosh, then I'm in trouble. I totally get that. Yeah, all of a sudden, if we're going, I look at the news. I know my own world. I know what I grew up in. I know that's true for me. Well, if I need a Savior, tell me more. Right. Right? Versus people who have gotten to the point of saying somehow or convinced ourselves that somehow we have a part to play. That's exactly it. Yeah. So that what you I were can save about, myself. Yeah. That, that somehow we can do something to mm-hmm. make it better. Right. Right. But again, if there can't be any interaction at all with God, right. If, if there's no, if there is a barrier called sin, that is, that is a mile thick concrete barrier. Right. There's no, there's no way, there's no way you can earn or, or do anything for you, especially when you think of uh, the wages of sin is death. Um, because spiritually speaking, then we're dead. We're dead. And and dead bodies don't do much. Dead bodies and can't, they can't do much. They can't save themselves. They yeah. can't resuscitate themselves. I cannot if I'm if I have a heart attack right here in front of you, I can't resuscitate myself, so I'm going to need you to do that. And you can't ask for help and you can't no. say I would really like to. Please yeah. come and help me. Please help me. Um all this stuff. You can't no. because you're not capable because you're right. dead. Because you're dead. And so this is where it's really important what God's word does. Mm-hmm. Right? Because even as we talk about baptism and eventually as we talk about communion as well, God's word is the power that is happening in baptism. It, that's what makes it different. Yes. That, that's what makes it different. That's what changes baptism from a symbol to a means of grace, the sacrament that makes it something that is a divine act that uh, we, we get to— um, be on the receiving end. Be of. on the receiving end of. Thank you yeah. for that. My brain, yeah. my brain glitched. No, you're good because that's and that's what I was going to say. Is like means of grace is a way that God saves His people. Yeah, right. God saves, and and that's where He works through the means. Right. Right. He works through different ways. He work. He's used people. He does as a use means people to proclaim God's word. Yep. He's used. Go through the Old Testament. He's used. He used water a rock and rocks and I mean, a donkey and mm-hmm. all this crazy stuff, right? But God always works through means and mediators and things like that. Now Jesus is the ultimate mediator. He is because of who he is. Because and what of he did. who he is and what he what he did. But we've talked about you know I that is something that I continually go back to because I need to be able to see it. I need to be able you know and and God forgive me and increase my faith. But I need to be able to touch things. Yeah. And um and even though you know Jesus is not right here in front of me, you know, in physical body, I can still wrap my mind around the person that he was while he walked this earth. And that is super helpful. And God does that with these sacraments, baptism being one, is that we can actually get our hands wet in it. And this goes back to, I'm sure we've talked about this just because this is a popular conversation I've been having lately. There's a, there's a uh, philosophy heresy type thing that's been alive for thousands of years called Gnosticism. Yeah. Fancy, fancy way of saying only the spiritual things matter. My body doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what I do with my body because the spirit world is ultimately what matters. Yeah. So even when I die, go away, bad body, yep. because it's just spirit it's life. It's just Let's spirit go. and it's all. And, and, and it's alive and well. And I'll do a class here at Trinity soon enough. I've already told Melanie, like, please put me down. Gnosticism, we got to talk about it. Yep. But that attitude that you're talking about, Dallas, the reason why it speaks so much is because the Bible says something different. Yeah, it does. The Bible says you are body and soul. That's right. That both of those matter. Mm-hmm. You're, you are you because you are body, Dallas, soul, and Dallas spirit. equals body, soul, and spirit. Mm-hmm. Right? Now, death, that's why death is bad because death separates yep. the body from the soul. Mm-hmm. And so that's why we're looking forward to the day of resurrection. Go back to it. Our, our longtime listeners are going to be like appreciating everything we're saying. All this to say your body matters. And because of that, God works through means and very tangible things that you can touch. And at the end of the day, 
the things that you heard there in First Peter 3, mm-hmm. God's the subject. Yeah, what not you heard us. in our conversation, God is the one who does things. The only one who can save or do an act that would lead to saving is God, right? And he's the lone ranger when it comes to who is actually saving us. Who is who's doing actually it. Doing something. We can't. Mm-mm. We can't do anything. We can't call out for help. We can't decide that we want to be alive. We're right. dead. God's word speaks and it creates faith. And that's where you see the stuff we talked about last week. People going, I've heard this now. What do I do? Because what was being shared, it was just God's word. Just he worked God's through Philip. He just, worked through just Peter. God's word. He worked through it was God's word. Yeah. God's powerful word mm-hmm. that leads to something else. So this is God actually doing something. And we see this then when we really get to break down some of the other places in scripture. So let's go Titus 3. That's an important place. And again, though throughout the whole thing, I want you to be listening for subject object. Like who is who is doing something? This is your grammar lesson for the week. Yeah. My, but but my, it's important. My favorite sermon I ever did was a confirmation service I did called The Grammar of the Gospel. Yep. It's on Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Uh, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not by yourselves. Uh, it is a gift of God, mm-hmm. not by works so that no man can boast. Right? God did the saving. You were the only in receiving end. You are in the receiving end. Right? And this is what we see in Titus 3. Look at verses 4 through 7. It says, but when the kindness of God, our Savior, and his love for mankind appeared. Now, again, there's a but. That means there's a transition. Let's go to one. Uh, Titus is, or Paul is saying to Titus, remind them to submit to rulers and authorities, to obey, to be ready for every good work, to slander no one, to avoid fighting, to be kind, always showing gentleness to all people. Uh, I love verse three, because this is where that transition is going to come in. For we too were once foolish, disobedient, deceived, enslaved by various passions and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful, detesting one another. Okay. Verse three, just summarized, we were all in big trouble. Right. Because we were all sinners. Mm -hmm. Verse four, but when the kindness of God, our savior and his love for mankind appeared, this is Jesus. He saved us. Subject, saved, object, us. Mm -hmm. All right. God saved us. Not by works of righteousness that we had done. Oh, there's a subject change, Mm -hmm. right? Works of righteousness would be subject, us, object, the works. But according to his mercy, how did he do it, Dallas? Peter or Paul says, through the washing of regeneration and renewal by the Holy Spirit. Washing is a word that is referring to baptism, right? Through the washing of regeneration, it's doing something. God is at work doing something and renewal by the Holy Spirit. He, subject, God, poured out his spirit on us, object, abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we may become, and that's a passive, that's why we are the subject, we may become heirs with the hope of eternal life. I know I just did a grammar thing, which has totally turned everybody off. What I'm saying is God is the one who does the work. We're on the receiving end of it. We're on the receiving end of it. We're the dead body on the ground getting resuscitated. Exactly. That's what I'm saying with all this subject-object conversation. Right. And how did he do it? He can do this through, through, baptism, through baptism. Through washing. The right? washing of, of water in the word. And and for our, our longtime listeners, this should be familiar to you because we've talked about uh, my, my guy, Nick at Night. Uh, we've seen Jesus say this, you know, you don't come into the kingdom unless you've been reborn by water and and the word. Yeah. And and the the kicker with that is is the word. Yes. It's the word. And I want to go all the way back to one of our very first episodes. Um and you don't like this phrase, but I love it. My fire breathing God. Oh when, no, I just when, think it's hilarious. When yeah. God speaks things happen. Yes, good. That that's the bottom line here is that it doesn't matter how how he accomplishes this. When God speaks something happens. Yeah. You're not going to be the same. Episode two, the auditory effect. Go give it a listen if you haven't, right? So, so what we're saying here is that God is the one who's doing something because he's saying something, but he's doing it through means, right? Mm-hmm. So, and, and and look at this, this whole saving, does baptism now save you? Peter already told us that. But look at the, the, the this is now Paul, right? He poured out his spirit on us abundantly so that uh, we may become heirs with the hope of eternal life because it's doing something, right? So without this, What's happening right We're now? Be faith separated. Yeah, faith is a big thing. We can talk about that at some point too. Faith is faith is the thing, right? But faith is a gift here that we're seeing. It is right in it baptism. Is. The Spirit is given to us, and faith is given to us. So this means, Dallas, it's not just a symbol. No, it can't just be a symbol. And uh, we, because if you you go back and you look at those those verses that, um, especially verse six, uh, it let's see. Um, he poured out the Spirit generously through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Um, 
so that we're justified by his grace. Yeah. And that is something, I mean, we look at the Matthew 28 and, you know, go and baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That is, he doesn't send out his disciples to go and create this new religion or this new church or this new movement and do it by their power and their name and in their strength. He commands them to do it in the name of of our one triune God. So we've got God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit yes. all at work here. And and that name means something. Yeah. Like that that means something. Absolutely. And so you have like another place where Paul's going to tell us similar 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 message, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, and what do you know, right? Because Paul's pretty consistent. All of his letters to me eventually have some of the same threads. They do. My, most of my messages probably have the same threads too. Mine do. Um, I'm actually going to start in verse 7. I want to get to verse 11 of 1 Corinthians 6. It says, As it is, to have legal disputes against one another is already a defeat for you. Why not rather be wronged? Why not rather be cheated? Instead, you uh, you yourselves do wrong and cheat, and you do this to brothers and sisters. Don't you know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom? Or God's kingdom, don't be deceived. No sexually immoral people, idolaters, adulterers, or males who have sex with males, no thieves, greedy people, drunkards, verbally abusive people, or swindlers will inherit God's kingdom. Uh, uh, verse 11. And some of you used to be like this, okay? But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Woof. We got to deal with what that says, right? We got to deal with that. It says you were washed. What's he talking about? If it's just a symbol, if it's just representative of what Jesus has already done and all these other things, then what's he talking about? You were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of God. He's talking about the working of God's word on people. Right. Yeah, through this strange means called baptism. So one of the reasons why we why we say like this is why baptism is so important. Yes. is that it it doesn't it's not a representation. It's an actuality. Yeah. Like it's it's a thing. It's not a ceremony. It's not a it's not a birthday party. It's not a 16 You know what I mean? It's not a 16th no, birthday it's not, party. But, it's not a nice milestone. But it is it something is, to remember and No, I mean, it's like, great. No, it's it's more than that is what I'm saying. My baptismal birthday was yesterday. Oh, nice. There and, you go. Yeah, and, Mine's and so up here in a few I weeks. I remember that. I mean, it March yeah. March 27th. I remember that. Good. Well, and that's the thing though, right? And, and what I was trying to get at Dallas was the symbolic approach to me again is there's no meaning in baptism. Nothing happens. It's Nothing just something, happens. you know, it's just it's it, a proclamation of an inner reality or something like that. It, it's it would be uh, similar to we remember uh, Saint Valentine, you know, we remember Saint Good. Patrick's Day. Good. Uh, nothing happens. My eternity is not dependent on what happened to Saint Valentine hundreds of years ago. My my eternity, there's nothing that that affects my daily life if I attend a Saint Patty's Day parade. Yeah. Um, this is not a symbol of something. This is not an a, a remembrance of something that happened to somebody else a long time ago. This is God's work in me. Like Actually in, doing something. He's doing something in my life. I'm sure I've shared this on the podcast, Dallas, but when it comes to baptism, when it comes to communion, what we recognize from the scriptures as holy acts, sacred acts, like part of that whole working through means thing mm-hmm. is God knows us. Oh, he does. Absolutely. And he knows how hard Satan's going to work to make us question how much God loves us. And and Satan doesn't have, he is the father of lies. So I'll, I'll give him that. And when he lies, he speaks his native tongue. Yeah. And, and he does. But he doesn't have to say something completely outrageous yeah. to get our eyes off of the goal. Go, go, uh, Genesis 2. Genesis sorry, sorry, 3. three. Genesis, Genesis 3. 3. And, you know, did God really, did say, really say, did he really say he just has to put a hint of doubt in our minds and, and he's got his fingerprints all over the controversy and the division associated with baptism. Yeah. Can it really do this? Yeah. Like, really? Do you really Think need about it? it? I mean, he didn't need a three minute TikTok video to convince Eve. No, he didn't. To do the wrong one thing. One question. Just one simple question. And mm-hmm. I think that's exactly what's happening, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. When we look at scripture, when we look at the history of the Christian church, baptism was significantly important. Why? 
because it was actually doing something that God was actually still working through the movement of the Holy Spirit in the Christian church. And that's what we say is happening when we carry out the sacraments is that, is that God is still working in his, through his word to bring people into faith and bring people into the community that we call the church, the people of God. Okay. So this is where we want to talk about those means, right? Where there's something deeper happening. Mm -hmm. And uh, I see you're in Ephesians. I'm going to go to Galatians in the meantime, what you got in Ephesians? I, don't know why okay. I went to Ephesians. I went to Ephesians 5 um, because if you want to talk about means, I've got in in bold on my, I mean, if y'all could see, can y'all see my notes? Look at these. <laughs> uh, and that was just a, a little bit of what I, what I, what I had in my, in my bag. Um, it's not the water. It's the word. And the water is, is uh, water by itself isn't going to do these things. If, if water was saving on its own. Yeah. Any, anybody that has been caught in a thunderstorm, anybody who's been swimming in the ocean or a lake or swimming pool or had a bath uh, would be saved. It's the word that mixes with that. And so I've got Ephesians 5, um, 26 and, um, and, 20, uh, and 27. That talks about husbands and wives. Okay, now we have been here before too. Mm -hmm. And, but um, and, uh, going to, uh, to 25, am I in the right spot? This is going to sound so disjointed when we actually release this. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word. Interesting. Okay. Wow. Okay. okay. Long way to get to that, yeah. to that part. But we've, you know, because Christ loves his church. Uh, we talked about this a little bit in our, in our husbands That's and wives so and our marriage. The with water through with the word. With water through the word. Yeah. Good it, catch. Thanks. It's, <laughs> I did my homework, even yeah. though I couldn't remember it yeah. right on the spot. Um, it, it's the word. Because what is that? That's, this is what I'm asking Dallas. What, what does that mean if not? Well, if, if it's not true, then okay, fine. But, but, but what, what does it mean if it's not what we're saying, right? So what in the world could uh, washing with water through the word? To make her holy. Yeah, so but he, what could that mean then? It doesn't mean anything. It yeah. can't mean anything else. Yeah. Like it can't mean anything That's else. That's where I'm at. That's yeah. where I'm at is, is I'm, and granted, like it's, it's clear. Our cards are all over the table. Like we, we are very convinced of this because we look at God's word and I believe that the Holy Spirit's been moving through his word to, to convict us of, of what we're seeing here. And, and it connects to then, uh, to the power that there's something incredible happening in baptism. And we see this again in, in more of Paul's letters. So Galatians 3, mm -hmm. uh, Galatians is a conversation that Paul's going to have with the, the, the early church in a lot of different places saying, look, quit trying to trust in your own works and your own stuff. Quit trying to be justified by the law. So quit trying to do, to be a, the best person in order to be saved. Christ already took care of it, right? So, so because uh, it's through faith, you've been justified through faith. Okay, Paul's gonna make that argument all the way through and faith is a gift. That's what he's gonna say to us. And he says, since that faith has come, verse 25 of Galatians 3, since that faith has come, we're no longer under a garden, guardian. We don't need the boundaries. We don't need the law anymore. Uh, for through faith, you are all sons of God in Christ Jesus. Okay, so there's a gift of faith, which is really important, which a lot of our brothers and sisters that disagree with us would agree. Faith is very important. Mm -hmm. The next verse, mm -hmm. right? Which my Bible separates it into two different sections and the original manuscripts, these aren't separated into different sections. These are the same letters. Mm -hmm. Okay, verse 27. For those of you who are baptized into Christ have been clothed with Christ. There is no Jew or Greek, slave or free, male or female, since you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you're Abraham's seed, heirs according to the promise. You're clothed with Christ because of baptism. How can you be clothed with Christ if it's just a symbol? Yeah. If it's just a representation. If, it, if it's just a, if, if it, if it doesn't mean what it says. Yeah. And, and, and so when we ended last week, I, I asked, I, y'all had homework for the week. Good, um, good, good. You had homework, homework. and uh, and so, you know, now it's your turn for a pop quiz on, on y'all. <laughs> um, do you believe that God can do what he said he can do? And and do you believe that he did what he said he did? And and that is all through the pages of, there. there's a, a, I don't know, a saying in the church, there's no text without context. Yeah. So, which just means you don't really get to pick and choose verses. You have to, that's why when we start with, you know, we have on our paper, oh, we're going to read Galatians 3 verses 26. Well, let's, we had to back up to, to verse 23 or whatever, because we've got to give the context of it. And um, so, 
if if you believe that God parted the Red Sea and you believe that he created Adam and Eve, that he created the world, that he did this, if you believe that he sent his son Jesus, why can you not believe that he can use baptism the way that he says he can do, which is it's forgiveness of sins and it saves you? Well, and that's the thing too, is a big, you'll hear this in future episodes when we talk about communion too. You either believe what he says or you don't. Yep, that's it. That's the line in the sand. You either look at the words or not. And and again, I'm not not trying to put anybody out of the camp. I'm not trying to fight. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to say, I have to look at what God says. And yeah, let's unpack it. Let's talk about all the possible meanings. But at the end of the day, there's going to be some sort of, when you look at all of these verses, there's a pretty clear message. Yeah. There's a very, very clear message that's yep. coming through that's not ambiguous. No, it it's not. It's not open to other interpretations either. I have dos mas, two more places that I would like to take us. And I'm actually going to go Colossians 2 first. Okay. Uh, Colossians 2, and I'm looking at verses 12 through 15. Because it's interesting. Because again, the whole point of this this part, these different passages we're bouncing around to friends is because we're just highlighting that God is saying big stuff is happening in baptism. Important stuff. Okay. Uh, so, it says, uh, and this is, we'll get into this more in the next episode. If you really want to talk about circumcision, we'll get into that at the end of the next episode. But verse 11, I'll start there. It says, you were also circumcised in him, in Christ, with a circumcision not done with hands, but putting off the body of the flesh and the circumcision of Christ, when you were buried with him in baptism through faith and the working of God who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, he made you alive with him and forgave all our trespasses. He erased the certificate of debt with its obligations that was against us and opposed to us and has taken it away by nailing it to the cross. Okay. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and disgraced them publicly. He triumphed over them. Okay. That first or the second verse that I said, when you were buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him uh, through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. Our boy Paul here is really trying to show us what God has done and what God is continuing to do and the power of baptism. The power of baptism. So I want to I want to put a little pin right there uh, just for some background information. Good. Uh, if, if you've ever been to a baptism at our church, we sprinkle. Okay. If you've been to a baptism, uh, if you were to go to a baptism in first century church, you dunk, and and so you go. They go Not under. Not necessarily true. They, actually, well, they yeah. go under the water, and and it's an image. It, it's imagery, so that um, it it's a little easier to grasp to be buried if you're under if your face is covered. I and then, see what and then you're you saying. see what I'm saying. Come back up. Saying. So the imagery, the imagery there. Well, and the reason why I say it's not necessarily true is because I loved my visit to Israel. Oh right? yeah, yeah. So I got to go to the the site, and I'm doing air quotes for those that aren't watching us okay. of Jesus' baptism. All we know is Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River. We have some good context clues on where this is and stuff like mm-hmm. that. But our our tour guide, who is Jewish, had okay. a lot of fun with us. Oh, I bet he did. Because he's like, oh, the mighty Jordan is coming up, you know, on the left as we were just driving. We hadn't gone to this site yet. Mm-hmm. But as we were just driving along, he's like, we're about to cross the Jordan. Get those cameras ready, blah, blah, blah. And people were. They were eating it up. And uh, and like we, we two-second pass of a tiny little, what we would call a creek. Uh, and he says, oh, there it was. What he's trying to say for us is we think of of a river and we think of the Mississippi because we're good old red-blooded Americans, Mm -hmm. right? And so, but you go, this is what's funny, Dallas. You go to the place where Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River and they've dug it out. They filled it up with a whole lot of water and they have made it to where you can go and do, and there's a lot of remembering of baptisms. There's a lot of actual baptisms, which are beautiful Mm -hmm. uh, in the Jordan River, but they had to create that Dallas. Well, they had to now. 2,000 years ago, the landscape looked a little bit different. But I'm saying like in the, yes, always. Yeah. But I'm also saying uh, there's a strong chance that it wasn't always under in the first century. No, not always. But if you, uh, uh, St. Augustine was dunked. Um, it, 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 the imagery there, the imagery that I'm that we're yeah. trying to because it's hard to understand some of these things. If you were buried with Christ in your baptism, well, how does that happen with with a, a few sprinkles of water? It's oh. the it, it's the imagery. Well, see, and this is there. where Dallas. I'm a I'm a good old Lutheran. I'm going to say, well, what does the Word of God say? The Word of God just says water. 
Well, yeah. exactly. Well, yeah. and what I'm saying is that's not the point. No, it's not. It's not the point. But the point here, the big point of Paul is that you're united with Jesus. You're Christ. united with Jesus. So you're buried not in a physical or not in a visible way. You're buried because just as Christ entered into the tomb, so his you, death is your death. Is your death? Yes. And, and we are joined. We are okay, joined good, with good, that. Good. I was like, man, alive. But no, but the the again the tangible elements associated with this, it does make it easier sometimes for us to understand when we have something visual in front of us to help with that. Sure, 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 sure. Keep going. Yeah, and that's where and that's where Paul, the big point here though, is is the whole you've been united with Jesus. Yes. You're united with his death, with his resurrection. And that was because where were you united? When were you united with Jesus in your baptism? Mm-hmm. Right? That's where you got faith, right? That's where it says. You were, it's, it says, uh, when you were buried with him in baptism, which you were also raised through faith in the working of God mm-hmm. uh, who raised him from the dead. So God is somehow working in baptism, which tells me not a symbol, it's a sacrament. Gotta be, gotta be a sacrament. All right. So then final place that I want to go, uh, Romans 6. Romans okay. 6 is the place I go to baptism because y'all, this is what we read at every funeral that we do. Uh, and it's not just in the, in the Lutheran church. This is a practice across denominations. Paul says, what should we say then? Verse 1. Should we continue in sins so that grace may multiply? Because essentially he's saying, hey, your sin's been taken care of, right? Jesus is your savior. That's enough, right, Dallas? That's enough. That's enough. Jesus took care of it. Okay, so he's saying, so he's trying to make sure people are going, oh, I'm already saved, so I don't need to, I can, I can keep on sinning. It doesn't I matter. I can do whatever I want because I I, I, I saw the cross. Yeah, and, he said, and because Jesus died and rose again for me, I can yep, do whatever I, I want. I can do whatever I want. So he asked the question, what should we say then? Should we continue in sin so that grace may multiply? Absolutely not. He's saying, that's not really the case. He says, how can we who died to sin still live in it? Or are you unaware that all of us who are baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? It's the same words of same words. Colossians, yeah. right? Same language that he's trying to say yeah. to us. You're united with Jesus. He says you were baptized into his death. You were connected with Jesus through the power of God and faith in your baptisms. Therefore, we were buried with him. Here's the word again, mm-hmm. by baptism into mm-hmm. death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too may walk in the newness of life. For if we've been united with him in the likeness of his death, we will certainly uh, also be in the likeness of his resurrection. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be rendered powerless so that we might no longer be enslaved to sin since the person who has died is freed from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. Because we know that Christ, having been raised from the dead, will not die again. Death no longer rules over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all time. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you too consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. So the whole thing is awesome. Uh, But the whole point is, once again, Paul is saying there's something deeper happening in baptism. There's something really important happening here. Right. You've been united with Jesus. Yeah. The cross and the empty grave his death, and his resurrection. And because of that, because of the faith given to you in baptism, Mm -hmm. you're saved. You're saved. And it's a concrete promise. Was the cross enough, Dallas? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Right? Is belief enough? Yes. Yes. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Yes. But why wouldn't you want this gift? Like, why yeah. wouldn't you, why, if Jesus is telling you to do something, yeah, why, good. why, one, why would you just openly disobey? Um, and, and two, why would you not want something beautiful that is being freely handed to you? Yeah. So well, that's the question. And if the word speaks this clearly about what baptism is, why would you oppose it? Right? Especially if it's just a symbol, if it's not a big deal, right? Yeah, what do you care? Belief if it's, is if it's absolutely not, enough, Yeah. right? And there's a promise associated with it because of salvation. But if there's this certainty that God is giving to his people through this gift called baptism, mm-hmm. why not have that certainty? Which leads me to at least what is my final question. Are we ready for the final I'm, question? I'm ready for your final question. If we're wrong, mm-hmm. if somehow we've misread all of these texts, yep. Uh what's the big deal? Right? If we're wrong somehow, if it's just a symbol, if it's just these things, then we're not causing any harm. No. Because at the end of the day, my 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 concrete uh, belief is grounded in Jesus Christ's death and resurrection and everything that he has done in his word that he speaks to me and says to me. Right. Right? 
So my baptism, why do I love it so much? Why do I lean on it so much? Because in my baptism, God's word was spoken to me. His promises were said to me that I was united with Jesus and it's Jesus that I'm clinging to. It's right? exactly At it. the end of the day, he's the heart mm-hmm. of the matter. So what harm are we doing? And yet at the same time, Dallas, I've seen people get really offended. Yeah, we'll talk about a little bit more of that in our next episode. Sure, I, I've had some some very intense conversations with people over over this. Yeah, and and so in our next episode, stay tuned. Uh, next time. So so that's but that's part A of the question. So what's what's the big deal? What's the big deal? Why get so angry if it's just okay. a symbol? Why get so angry if it's not like if it's? I would think if I had a symbolic approach, I would look at us sacramental people and say, "Bless your heart." Bless your heart. Yeah, bless your heart. You think it's Jesus? Yeah. Blah blah blah. blah. But I have seen people just get, and maybe it's because people don't like hearing, like they'll hear the word "you're wrong" you're or wrong. something. And I, I can appreciate that. I can get that. But then the flip side of that question is, but if we're right, yeah, what happens if we're right? Yeah, yeah. And if and if we have the right reading of scripture, if this is truly what baptism is, mm-hmm. then we should probably do what Jesus says and go into all nations, baptizing, baptizing them. them in the name of the Father and of Mm -hmm. the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. Right? That's that's essentially the question we wanted to put in front of everybody today was similar sacrament. What does the word actually say? Um, Is this just representative? And it's going to lead into that conversation that we're going to have next time, Dallas, which you'll notice when you see the title for next week's episode, we we had a little fun with it because it's two words. We had nerdy fun. Nerdy fun. That wasn't, it wasn't real. It was nerdy fun. Yes, yes, yes. The the, the first word is going to be in brackets. And yep. that's because next week's episode, we could take away the brackets and next week's episode is just baptism. That's what we're talking about. Baptism. We've been talking about baptism, but we're putting a word in brackets because it is a question of the church. And that word in brackets is infant. Uh, so infant baptism. Because for us, we're just talking about baptism. There's not infant baptism and adult baptism. There's just baptism. There's just baptism. And we're going to talk to you about why. Mm-hmm. Like, so we're going to look at the word of God for us that is just... Very clear to us that anybody and everybody can get baptized. Right. Uh, uh, should be baptized. Not should just be. could be. Not could be, but should, should be. be. Um, and why we think that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so it's another one of those episodes that if you're just interested in what is the fullness of, well, and, and, and again, I'll back up for a second. I would say the fullness of what we think the Bible says about these things, right? Because here we, I don't have somebody symbolic sitting across me. That would be an interesting episode. It really would. Well, we do. We have our Ethiopian eunuch. He well, is symbolic, well, I'm saying, sort of. I'm saying some of the, with the symbolic perspective. The Ethiopian eunuch shares us. Oh, I got to be, oh, be baptized, you know? Okay. Um, but but that's what I mean. And so so that's the thing is we're going to keep talking about it. We're going to talk about it from why we believe that, mm-hmm. why we believe that baptism is baptism for all people because it's God doing the work because we need a savior. We need to be free from our sin. God works through means. All the conversation we had this episode, you're going to see play out in the next one. Exactly. As well. So exactly. Uh, with that, I'd love to close us in a word of prayer. Okay. And then, uh, yeah. And then next time. Good and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you. Uh, Lord, we thank you for sending your son uh, as uh, our savior. Lord, the one who would go to the cross, uh, Lord, especially as we celebrate that this week, as we remember that this week, Lord, that he went to the cross, but that wasn't the end. Lord, he rose three days later. And Lord, he went about his work and his uh, uh, his proclamation, the fullness of the story of who he is and what he is doing as he sent the church out after that moment to continue to tell everyone about the victory we have in him. And Lord, especially the job it is for his church to baptize. So Lord, help us. Help us to, to see baptism for the fullness of what your word confesses that it is. Uh, Lord, that it is something that is powerful, that it is the work that you are still doing in this world. Lord, help us to respect it. And Lord, for those that are going to have conversations about this uh, as we uh, depart, Lord, be with them and be in the center of what they're talking about. Give them grace to have the right conversations. Give them peace. Give them discernment uh, to still love one another, uh, to still glorify you above all things. Lord, especially the grace that we have in Jesus Christ. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. With that, always, if you want to glorify us, just keep the conversation going, but have it gracefully. Have it, uh, yeah. And and do your best charitably to one another, truly trying to wrestle with what God's word actually says. That's what this podcast is Mm -hmm. about. And uh, that would help us out so much. Share this episode, like, rate, whatever you want to do. And we'll see you next time. Next time.